It's time for Washington Fish Quest. This episode, plug cut hearing for Puget Sound salmon. Hey, Washington Fish Questers, Blake here. I'm out here. Uh, I just launched out a shill shoal. I guess there's no real need to uh, keep that a secret because it's the most popular, probably salmon fishing spot in the state. <laughs> or maybe launch anyway. I don't have much time to be out here. I have maybe two hours. So sometimes when that happens and I don't have time to figure out what they're biting on, you know, whether it's they're hitting like a oh, coho kill is usually pretty safe, but or if they're hitting a hoochie or what have you, I just like to go with bait. A lot of the time, nothing beats good old fashioned herring. You know, just trolling the herring on a flasher or even mooching a herring. Sometimes, you know, it's just if you don't have a lot of time, you only have one pull in the water because only the one of you. It's uh, it, it's a good way to go. It's an efficient way to go because this is my first time here this year. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the bite is on. So I got my herring right here, and actually, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Blake to let you know how they were made. <laughs> Thanks, Blake. I'm in my kitchen here the night before. Now, before I get into showing you how to actually plug cut the herring and then put them in a brine overnight, I'm gonna show you the different sizes of herring for your consideration. And I got three of the ones I commonly use right over here. Now, herring are kind of oddly uh, done by color. <laughs> so, the smallest of the gang is orange label herring. These guys run up to four inches. They're like three and a half to four inches. I actually use these for chum. So I'll put these under a bobber, I'll cut them, put them under a bobber and let them drift. And you can use them for coho in that way too. A coho will, will take one off a bobber like that as well, if you're in an area where they're going by and they're hungry. Up next, this is the one I use the most. This is red label herring. They run up to five inches, they're four to five inches. Great for coho, you know, cut, cut plug right there. Real nice size, you know, it'll get cohos from, you know, two pounds to eight pounds, you know, or more even, but I'm just saying they're a great all-purpose size. The next one, and this is kind of funny because it's, it's not actually a green label, but it just says green. <laughs> these are green label herring. These are five to six inches. I'd probably run these if they're a coho and king's present since I'm going to be fishing in the marine area 10. And there will be king's present, but you can't retain them. I'm more, more inclined to go with the red labels. But uh, green labels are a lot of people's go-to. So it's really the, the red and the green are the two most, most popular herrings in Puget Sound as far as plug cutting goes. There's two more sizes of herring, which I don't think I have any on me. One is blue label. Those run seven to eight, so very big. Uh, those are a bit big for what I tend to go for, you know. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll default to a green. But with the blues, some people use this for kings, especially up around Nia Bay, if they're like running like right by the kelp beds or something, because uh, a big native king coming in from the ocean, sometimes they'll act like a pike or something. They'll like kind of hide around a, a weed line and they like ambush something as it goes by. So sometimes they get usage that way. Then the one, the biggest of them all is a black label, and those run like nine to ten inches. They're like rainbow stalker trout. <laughs> they're so dang big. And the only usage I've ever used those for is halibut. If uh, anybody has used those for kings, uh, catch me in the mints. I'd love to hear about it. But uh, yeah, so that is the five. Orange, red, green, blue, black. All right, well, let's cut plug us a herring, but I want to disclaimer that this is just how I do it. I've counted no less than five ways to plug cut a herring. Well, if you include like how you set it up on the hook, I suppose. So this is just my way. I'm sure there'll be people in the comments that do it a different way, and please feel free to share. First, you'll need a sharp knife. I actually wish this knife was a little shorter. But it is my sharpest knife. It's a fairly new fillet knife, so I'm going to go ahead and run with that. All right, so let's plug cut a herring here. There you go. Sorry that the camera leg's kind of in the shot there. I don't know how to get it out. It's still a decent shot. So if you handled a fish before, you know that this, this part behind the gill here, on the body, that like where the gill plate would touch, is a little harder than right behind there, you know. So when I, when I plug cut mine, I like to kind of include that in the cut. Uh, and so then you want to cut back at about a 45 degree angle kind of, you know, at this this front uh, pectoral fin here. And uh, I don't go all the way back, though. Maybe like two-thirds back on that fin. And uh, you're actually going to use more of the, the meat of the knife just to make sure I get a good good deep cut. I'm just going to go do it real quick here. There we go. And cut. Yeah, I'm happy with that angle. Oops, sorry. Pulled it out of the frame there. And I just kind of give it a little squeeze, real gentle-like. You don't want to puncture the stomach at all. And by puncture, I mean like tear it, you know. There we go. Get the guts out. And there you go. Plug cut herring. Now, if you were to do this at a uh, less angular degree than 45, it's a tighter spin, like the, you know, it spins tighter. If you were to do it at a greater angle, so like let's say I went all the way to the back of that pectoral fin, then you have a much loopier spin. Sorry, I know you can't, couldn't see that there. <laughs> but a uh, coho is like a tighter, faster spin. So that's what I'm going with. And then a lot of people will either cut a V right here near the butthole, or they will uh, puncture it, just like stick a knife up there 
to kind of, I think that's the cut down on wind resistance, or water resistance anyway, probably keeps the top from mushroom reaming out longer. I usually don't. I just tend to burn through herring. <laughs> All right, now to brine them. So my brine recipe is incredibly simple. I just use a quart of water, aka four cups, and I usually like to use about three quarter cup of salt. Uh, I think a lot of people use half a cup. I go a little, little higher. And then I use uh, about a tablespoon of borax. And some people use additives to make them shiny. In my opinion, that's the job of the flasher, so I usually don't add anything uh, you know, like bluing agent. Some people will make their hair kind of blue. Uh, however, I am in a hurry. Uh, you know, I got, I'm going to leave in the morning, and uh, time's a waste, so I need to get these herring in the brine. So I am actually just going to use a store bought concoction. Uh, you know, I don't think there's any. Personally, I don't think there's any big difference. I think it's all the same ingredients, so I use them pretty indiscriminately though It's just whatever's on the shelf as long as it has salt and borax. I'm good and for as far as how Long these will keep good. It kind of depends how long you keep them cold So I've actually taken those out of the fridge twice. I've always kept them in a cooler with ice uh, I was out here a few days ago and couldn't launch just because it was too windy There was 20 mile an hour gusts in my little 14 foot one so Levi and I just had to call it, uh, which is, for me, it's a 90 minute drive, so it kind of stunk, but better safe than sorry. But at any rate, those herring will be fine for a couple of weeks, as long as they're kept super cold. I like to keep my herring in the cooler, like on ice, you know, like they're in the brine, but on ice. And that will uh, that'll keep them pretty preserved. For whatever reason, herring don't freeze well, and, uh, you know, uh, so I see a lot of people like throwing them out, you know, when they're done. If you're going to be back out, I mean, if, as long as you kept them really cold and in the brine, they should be should be okay. In fact, they might be like kind of hard as rocks <laughs> as long as they were properly uh, chilled. Here's the flasher of the day. I got some two-out hooks on there. You know, I really could go with threes, but my hearing are, are you know, it's a mix. So, you know, th threes or twos would have been fine. Uh, three odd or two odd, that is. All right, let's rig up our herring. One thing I don't think I made clear in the tutorial was it's a 45 degree angle, kind of like this way and also down. So, you know, you're kind of cutting towards the stomach cavity. So there's a bunch of different ways to do it, just the same way there's a bunch of different ways to plug cut them. So I like to put the top hook kind of up here through the spine and get it in nice and deep. Oops, sorry if the camera's shaky. I got to cut some wake here. There we go. Put the thick bony part. Now, if you just leave this outside, that's called a Westport rig. If you just have the the, the uh, trailer just like kind of out here just doing whatever. You can also kind of tuck this inside. And right here, where kind of like the dark meets the light, gently put it through. There we go. That was not very good. I also happened to grab one of my cruddier plug cuts. <laughs> so there you go. Now that's going to stay more in the back. When I'm in CQ and the fish actually like not this the salmon, I mean the coho actually like gnaw on them. Uh, I have a buddy, and I'll do it sometimes, especially if I have too much leader, where I actually tuck it in the back here. I'll just uh, actually put the hook through this back area and have it like that, but under the skin. I'm not going to do that here because they're more likely to strike, and if they don't get it, then just kind of ignore it. All right, this isn't a tactics video, but a lot of people are out deep, so I'll start shallow just because I haven't seen any rods going off or anything like that. So I'll probably start at 200 feet and work my way out to as deep as I need to go to find the fish. But if everybody was in shallow, I'd probably do the exact opposite of that. <laughs> like I say, if I see if I see people getting fish at a depth, then great. But if I don't, then might as well explore. The herring in the water, let's see if we got that nice tight spin. Oh my word, I might jump in and eat this herring, everybody. That's a nice spin. Yeah, I see it back there. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. That is tight. Oh, shoot! Hey everybody, I was just setting my cameras up and uh, I got popped immediately the, the second the, the second the herring went down. Holy smokes, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to film this well or not. All right, got a fish right here. That was instant. I was just going to go set up the bow cam. <laughs> Did it break off? No, it's still there. Silver, it's going to go in the boat. God. Sometimes bait, man, you just can't miss. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Whoop. Oh. Well, sorry for that lousy film job. Lucky I didn't end up in the water and I had like five chances at that fish. Just because I had the camera in one hand, I was trying to get a little content for you there, but 30 seconds in the water. <laughs> Down to that was maybe about 25 feet. Yeah, there we go. 
But anyway, I was just about to go to the I was just about to go to the bow of the boat and put my uh, put my uh, cam on the front there. And uh, man, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, just boom, boom, and then it was just popped. Oh, I am pumped. Hey. Here's a bit of a different setup. Like I say, there's tons of different ways to, to rig a plug cut. So I got the hook up there, and this hook coming out of the back actually put through the same hole that this hook's coming through, if that makes sense. So that line's going down through here, then I have it sticking out the back. When running a plug cut, I'll, I'll, I will pull up and check my bait maybe every eh, 15 minutes, maybe 15 to 20. I mean, it's just not worth, I'd probably even say closer to 15. It's just not worth fish, not fishing, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, jellyfish could have knocked it off, some weeds, uh, shaker, you know, so. I will say I check it a little more, but not much more than, than hardware, because if it's a lure, you can still get the jellyfish and the weeds and stuff. It's just the only difference is you can't really get knocked off the hooks. Alright, took a bit longer than the first, but got fish number two in the boat, and it is looking really good. Look at all those sea lice, holy smokes. This guy's, this guy's pretty chrome. Ooh, this is a hatchery fish. Look at, look at the, how deep that hook is. It just devoured that herring. That, bat, that trailer hook is all the way down the gullet. Well, there you go. I got one fish about 30 seconds of being in the water. The other one came maybe an hour later, so I'm, it's about seven. And I'm gonna get off of the water here. Gonna go grab a nap. Yeah. And that's the power of plug cut herring. You know, it's uh people are the flotilla is still out here in force. Nets are going down, but it doesn't seem to be a white hot day. Uh, so it's you know, I think it's fine. I think people are catching fish, but uh, yeah, sometimes uh, plug cut herring, you know, especially if those fish are still trying to fatten up, you know, if they still got a long run ahead of them. Uh, those they just can't resist, you know. I can barely resist. Well, hopefully you can't resist seeing me next time on Washington Fish Quest.